Hey everybody, this is Harry coming to you from Swanee County, Live Oak, out in the country. Beautiful day out here. 80 degrees out, birds chirping. The roosters are sleeping, I guess, because they're not uh, uh, cock-a-doodle doing, whatever. And they're not doing their crap. So anyways, I watched seven movies this week. Let's get on to it. Uh, so the first one I watched was the Molly Maguire from 1970 with Sean Connery and uh, Richard Harris and Samantha Agar. Um, directed by Martin Ritt, I think I already said that. Um, came out in 1970. Um, it says Skullkill Skull, Skull County, Pennsylvania, 1876. A secret society of Irish coal miners bombed by a sacred oath put pressure on the greedy and ruthless company they worked for by sabotaging mining facilities in the hope of improving their working conditions and the lives of their family. <coughs> and basically, a bunch of Irish badasses. And um, I thought it was a good film. It wasn't the best film. Um, uh, the best... Um, I don't know, I guess Union type film. But um, I gave it three and a half stars. Uh, it kind of it was, it was slow paced. Um, let's see how long it was. It was uh, just around two hours long, a little bit maybe, maybe over two hours long. <clears throat> no, it was at two hours, exactly two hours long. <coughs> excuse me, dragged in places. Um, but it was, it was, it was, it was a good film. Um, I miss periods, uh, there was some violence in it. Uh, um, but, uh, well worth checking out. Um, Sean Connery's performance kind of laid back, subdued a bit. Uh, Richard Harris plays like a, um, If you haven't seen it, I don't want to give it too away, but uh, anyways, he joins the mining camp and he is into, um, he infiltrates the mining camp and gets into the Molly McGuire's and, and, um, and brings them out, um, you know, so but anyways, I gave it three and a half stars, it was a good watch, good to watch that film, I had never seen it before. And then the uh, next night I watched uh, Twilight Time, um, Cowboy, a uh, film called Cowboy from 1958, directed by Delmer Daves, um, with Glenn Ford, Jack Lemmon, and uh, Cash, Cash Eve, Brian Donlevy, Dick York, and Richard Jackal, and uh, Chicago Hotel Clerk uh, Frank Harris, who is uh, Jack Lemmon, uh, dreams of his life as a cowboy, and he gets his chance when... Uh, jilted by the father of the woman he loves, who uh, he loves a Mexican woman, and the father is like, no, we're not having any of this. So, and then she winds up getting married to another man in uh, Mexico. Um, Jack Lemon, he plays a dark, very dark character in this. At first, it started out he wasn't that way. He was like a big dreamer. He wanted to do instead of being a hotel clerk, he wanted to be a cattle. Um, a cattleman and do the cattle drives and be a cowboy and he gets that chance and him and uh, Glenn Ford uh, made a, uh, and signed a contract or made a contract with each other and then Glenn Ford says well if I had a few drinks of me uh, the, the contract's no good but Jack Lemon paid for part of that contract and uh, anyways and it, Jack Lemon turns dark in this film so I gave that one um, three and a half stars. Oh, somebody pulled up in the yard. Time for a commercial break. Commercial break back. Over with. Guy was just using my driveway as a turnaround. So, because <clears throat> sometimes we have the pest control fellow come out and, and they hadn't called, so I. But it might have been the pest control guy, but anyways, it wasn't. So Cowboy, I gave three and a half stars. Um, 
Worth a watch. I got it on Twilight Time uh, Blu-ray. It's a good Western. Then the next one I watched was uh, 1975 French Connection 2 uh, with Gene Hackman, Fernando Ray. Uh, so uh, Popeye Doyle, Gene Hackman travels to France. This is uh, a continuation of the original uh, uh, French Connection. The only thing with this was is that it was directed by this one was directed by John Frankenheim, not William Friedkin. And uh, Gene Hackman uh, becomes a drug addict in this movie. Um, the guy he's chasing after Fernando Ray, his character in the movie, um, wants you know is trying to get rid of Gene Hackman and starts shooting him up with uh, heroin, and uh, he becomes addicted. The French police officer has to come in and um, try to uh, get him straight. We can go cold turkey. <clears throat> it was decent enough. Not as good as the original French Connection. Um, kind of find myself bored with it a little bit here and there. Dragged a little bit. <clears throat> well, I gave that one three and a half stars out of five. <clears throat> The next thing one I watched was a DVD of The Informer uh, from 1935. And in the big old pickup trucks. And I gave that one four and a half stars. Um, There's Victor McLaughlin, uh, Heather Angel, Preston Foster, Margot Graham, Wallace Ford, Una O'Connor. Yeah, Una O'Connor, you probably remember her as the screaming lady from The Bride of Frankenstein. Um, <clears throat> this film was directed by John Ford. And this won a bunch of Academy Awards. Uh, um, believe. I believe. Victor McLaughlin, yeah, Victor McLaughlin won. Um, Best Actor Award for this film, playing Jippo Nolan, who is the Irish man who's down on his luck, has no money, and um, he's trying to get a drink and get some food and plans and wants to go to, a, to the United States. So he turns his best pal in, and who is an IRA um, guy, works for the IRA, Irish Republican Army, and... Uh, turns him into the British, the black and tans, and he gets killed. And Jippo gets 20 pounds for that uh, deed. And then uh, the IRA suspects him of doing this. And uh, they follow him and see that he's starting to spend money. Where does he get the money? Because I mean, he never has money. And if you want to know the rest, like Bob says, you got to watch the movie. So John Ford's The Informer from 1935. I watched it several times. I didn't own it on DVD. I've seen it years ago on um, TNT. I want to say TNT. They uh, played um, some old movies back in the day. And, um, you know, to turn it on 11 o'clock at night, you would find it. And this was one of the films. I actually had uh, videoed it uh, um, back in the, ooh, probably 1989, 1990, something like that. So, and then I found it on eBay for five, five ninety nine. It's out of print, and so I found it for a good price used. So I said, "What the heck?" And I went ahead and picked it up so I could have it in my library. Then um, the other night I was trying to find, I was trying to watch a movie called Alexander the Great, which I got on Twilight Time, and I just couldn't concentrate on a film. It's uh, a Richard Burton film. Um, Eventually, I'll get to it. I just couldn't concentrate on it. There was a lot going on in the house. And um, and when you watch those big, epic films from that time, you got to pay attention to what's going on in the film. So, um, so I turned it off. So I thought I'd put something on, maybe something mindless, and I was searching Netflix. Couldn't find it. Couldn't find it. Then I came across The Foreigner, um, which came out... Oh, good Lord. About 2017? Yeah, 2017, starting by, uh, directed by Martin Campbell. 
and it stars Jackie Chan and Pierce Brosnan. And um, and it's about uh, Jackie Chan's daughter uh, is killed in an IRA blast in London, and Jackie Chan is a um, uh, special forces guy from China or Korea, I think Korea or China. Anyways, he's a special force guy, and he goes after the IRA. He goes after Pierce Brosnan and his gang, and starts things start happening. Sort of like a Taken, like a, a, a another thing of t uh, like a Taken film. But yeah, I found it decent. It was entertaining. It kept me awake, and I enjoyed it enough. Yeah, I gave it three stars. Then the other night, same thing situation. Couldn't find nothing uh, what I wanted to watch. DVD. It was kind of late at night. It was like 9.30 or so. So I put on Amazon Prime and I came across a film called Heartburn with Jack Nicholson and uh, uh, oh my god my brain is so fried. Um, you know, like I had to look this stuff up. I know Jack Nicholson, Meryl Streep. I should know Meryl Streep by now. And Maureen Stapleton, Jeff Daniels. A uh, romantic comedy from 1986, directed by Mike Nichols. It 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 dragged for me. Uh, I kept falling asleep, and, and uh, I don't know. I gave it three stars from what I remember of it. Don't know why, but it just uh, didn't do nothing for me. Heartburn from 1986. It probably didn't do nothing back in 1986 either. I didn't bother looking. <coughs> And then, um, last night I watched Netflix Rental come in. It's been on the list for like two months and you can never get it in. I almost rented it from the Red Box. But it, um, Parasite. Enjoyed the movie. Very, very good movie. Enjoyed it. <clears throat> totally different from what I expected. A little comedy, a lot of uh, stuff going on, a little murder at the end. Um, crazy shit. I enjoyed the movie. That's probably one I might I might buy that one, put that in the library. I, I really enjoyed it so much. Uh, came out in 2019, uh, directed by Bong Joon Ho, and a winner of Best Picture. So, yeah, and the photography, cinematography looked good. The the, the film looked gorgeous. It, the way it was shot, the way it was framed, and everything it was it was a great film. So, Parasite, 2019. Here you go, another shitty uh, what I watched uh, video this week. And uh, thank you for watching. Nintendo 2020, I think it is. Uh, uh, appreciate you watching and uh, stay safe. Be calm. The numbers here uh, where I live is going up because of a nursing home. Uh, so deaths are occurring here in this county. Um, and, um, and the cases of COVID-19 is... Um, rising because of the nursing home and it's sad to see some of these uh, you know these young children anywhere but in this county here the 10 and a 12 year old has it and uh it's sad to see that they they got infected with it and, and i got grandchildren and a 10 year old daughter and it's sad to see but anyways thank you for watching be safe bye